A couple other things I do with my classes, I, I like to torture them a little bit. I, I took them last week out to the biggest ditch in Maryland, which, if you look, uh, it's on Route 404 if you go to the Delaware beaches between Denton and Bridgeville. And it's a hell of a ditch. It's one of the biggest ditches in the country that I know of. It's not the Panama Canal, but it's, it's about 120 feet across, and it drains about a third of the eastern shore of Maryland which has a very extensive system of agricultural drainage ditch. They're all designed to take an inch of rain an hour off the fields, which is really, without that, we wouldn't be able to raise grain for 600 million chickens a year down there whose manure is polluting a lot of our rivers. What a loss. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we go out to this ditch and we put our canoes in. And then we go about a mile, half a mile, and. Uh, at some point they had to stop ditching because they were getting down toward the sea level and it didn't make much more sense. And we watched just foot by foot how nature reestablishes meander. You know, uh, in nature, we don't really know exactly why this is, but almost anywhere on Earth, uh, a natural waterway doesn't run straight for more than about 10 times its width. And there are a lot of theories things evolve from the rotation of the earth to, to, to just breeze starting to come in and sediment catches and water moves around and we go back to curves. And the whole point of the exercise, of course, is to write about the natural versus the man-made straight lines versus curves. And that's a, a very rich subject to get into is whether the, the best, the, the fastest way for me to be is clearly a straight line. Is it the best way? You know, that swamp, I tell them, that ditch maximizes one thing, and it maximizes it really well, getting an inch of rain an hour off the land. The swamp doesn't maximize a damn thing, it just maximizes life. And they kind of enjoy the swamp more than the ditch, they all agree. Uh, the other thing I fool around with with my kids is, is connections. You know, with Chesapeake Bay, we all know that we need to understand it within the context of its watershed, which Bay is kind of Maryland and Virginia, a couple hundred miles long. The watershed's big. It's six states, 64,000 square miles, Cooperstown, New York, Baseball Hall of Fame. That's right at the top of the watershed, right where it starts, right next door to the Baseball Hall of Fame. It goes out to Lynchburg, Altoona, Pennsylvania, down almost. It's almost the whole east coast between Vermont and North Carolina. But there are other sheds. There's the air shed. I won't go into that. But the uh, migration shed is what I call it. And, you know, we go out and look uh, in the winter at these beautiful wild swans that you can see up and down the bay. They fly 4,500 miles from Alaska, and they depend on a whole series of feeding stations, wildlife refuge, just between here and there. And then they fly back every year. And it's a way of, they connect us into a much wider thing. We go. There's a parking lot in Centerville, which is a little town on the eastern shore. And nobody ever notices this, but right there between the Dunkin' Donuts and the South Eleven, there's a little pipe that comes out of just a little swamp about the size of two rows of chairs here. And uh, there's a biologist with Maryland who goes there every fall, usually November, and he puts a net over that pipe, and he catches these gorgeous silver eels. They're the eels that you find in every stream in the Chesapeake Bay, but they have put on fat, they've, uh, their, their ears have shrunk, they have uh, turned a silver color. They are preparing to go to the Sargasso Sea, which is where eels from every little stream, Herring Run right here in Baltimore, eels at a certain stage in life. They head for the Sargasso, they spawn at depths of several thousand feet. No one's ever actually even been able to put a camera down there. And then somehow the young get back into every stream on the bay. It's such a mystery and such a connection. And it's going on right under our noses every fall. 